Cool. Well, well, you don't have to ask me too many questions. Is there? Do you have a pressing question after working with me for this mm, long? Let's see. So Christian and I like just like really had some. Uh, we met just a few like years ago, right? Yeah, yeah and, just and a few we, years ago. We really have connected, and um, I've been you know just really super um, impressed, and 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 uh, just I have really appreciated this show and the the, the complexity of the show. So. I guess my first question would be that, you know, um, you have facilitated, like, conversations with folks like Alicia Garza from Black Lives Matter um, or Jeff Chang, and you really are tapping into all of these different movements, whether it's racial justice or evictions. Um, can you talk about how, as a white woman in your curatorial practice, what are some things that you really think about when you are bringing groups of people together, and, and how do you, you know, use your privilege to fuck shit up. Look around you, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to hear from a lot of different people. My, my curatorial background started working in community spaces. I started out after grad school at Pro Arts in Oakland and working um, with uh, the community in the East Bay. And it just was the way to work for me. It wasn't as though I had another set of ideas, like I could choose this other path this was the value system, bringing together as many different voices as possible. I've left the Bay Area and come back a few times, but I've mostly been in the Bay Area most of my life. And I know this place really well, and I, I've worked in San Francisco a lot, but I've always lived everywhere else in the Bay Area, because it's kind of cold here. So I always tend to choose the sunnier spots in the, in the Bay Area in terms of where I've lived. But it's always been very mixed. It's always been a lot of different perspectives. I've always only been working with artists, too. And so this is just what I know. And I really care a lot about equity, which I don't think makes me a particularly unique curator. But it's a value system, not just in my work, but in my house and what I want my children to grow up with as well. And so um, I'm really interested in public expression. I'm interested in public space. A lot of my work is preoccupied with how artists confront violence. And so there is, in this exhibition, a somewhat, I mean, when you get into my essay, it's pretty well articulated. But within the exhibition itself, there's a real commentary about public violence, which is something that um, I'm very preoccupied with in terms of how artists confront it and how they actually impact change around what's allowed and what's possible. And so when I have the opportunity to write something or when I have the opportunity to work with artists, I want to always go back to those themes. Not necessarily always violence, but it does creep in. It's, it's, it's everywhere all the time. My children had a lockdown today at school. Oh. Not a drill, an actual lockdown. And they're five and seven years old. I've always, as somebody who's really engaged in the conversation around uh, gun violence, I've always thought I need to talk to them about lockdown drills. It never occurred to me that they would have an actual lockdown before a drill. And I never really knew when the right time would be to talk to them about it. And today I got this automated call saying that they had locked down the school because there was armed suspects who had been apprehended by the police. There wasn't a ton of information about it. This is how I push back against that, by working with artists that are pushing back against that. And Christian, tell us, tell us something uh, juicy, because I remember there was times when I was calling you and you were like kind of stressed out and you were like, tell me what was like one of these, what was, what was one of the hardest parts of doing this show? Maybe like something you were not expecting or you were just like, what the fuck? What, was, what were some of the challenges that you ran into? Um, no, we're not going to talk about this like at a bar somewhere. <laughs> we're going to talk about it here at the show. Um, <laughs> while it's being recorded for distribution on social media. Uh, the show came together in a very narrow window of time. I actually received the invitation from Deborah Cullinan to start thinking about this show. Deborah is the CEO here at Yerba Buena. And um, I was invited to start thinking about this show at the end of July. And so there, you know, that was the beginning of thinking about the show. And then hitting the ground running really started to happen in November. And 
it wasn't so much that it was um, a negative thing. I think the opportunity to expand the show and to work with more artists than I had initially planned for, that was when there was definitely a match. And also we decided um, the new visual arts director, Lucia San Ramon, uh, initiated a conversation about revisiting the architecture of Yerba Buena. So we were revisiting the architecture at the same time that I had the opportunity to expand the exhibition. And so it was a little tense then. You know, I mean, it was the holidays too, you know, trying to think about what other kinds of work I wanted to bring into the show. Because I've written about a lot of these artists over the years, but this window of opportunity was that I could bring in artists I wasn't familiar with or hadn't worked with in the past. And so that was, that was probably maybe the crunchiest moment. And also, um, you know, I, I remember when we were talking about uh, the, the press and the, the, the press strategy for the show. What, do you, what are some of the... I think that sometimes people think activism and they have particular maybe like stereotypes or biases or even in their own narrow vision. What are some, would you say, like, have you noticed have been some of the uh, most uh, surprising reactions, whether it's been by critics or by uh, the press? And also, what have you really tried to communicate outwards when it comes to talking about all this different activism? Mm -hmm. So... We've had an enormous amount of really amazing press for the exhibition. I actually went on the news to talk about this show on uh, KTVU Channel 2, 4 o'clock Friday afternoon news, live news with um, Kiba Arnold, which I don't even like to be photographed, So, um, and, and people know this about me, and so to put me on the live news was sort of, you know, heart attack making. Um, but it was so exciting to me that night to realize I was on the news talking about the importance of artists in public life. Like, it was a life goal I never even knew I had. And then I was just like, how do I get back on the news? I got to get back on the news. <laughs> and so, I mean, that was a really exciting opportunity. Um, there, there has been a lot of great press and a lot of support from um, KQED wrote a wonderful um, review, Danny Burleson. Sarah Burke, one of my favorite writers in, in the Bay Area, um, hands down from the East Bay Express, came um, very early on to see the exhibition. And there has been some challenging press as well. Some um, sort of, I would say, senior art critics have come in and not understood how this work is art, or not how understood how this work fits into the canon, and um, maybe just kind of missed it in a lot of ways. And, you know, that would have been a great opportunity for me to do a walkthrough with them. Generally speaking, I prefer to leave the press alone because I'm also part of the press, and I don't like to be um, escorted through an exhibition. I like to be left alone as much as possible when I'm looking, and so I've kind of pulled back that way unless somebody has asked me to give them a tour. And so um, there is a second part to what you asked, but as far as the press goes, the most exciting press for me has been the general interest types of things like the news, like public media. That's where I write. That's, yeah. Those are the kinds of places that I want my writing to be. I don't want my writing in an exclusive art magazine that eight people read. I want it in a newspaper that millions of people read. And, and how do you negotiate that with the fact that there are some people like what you just explained that mm -hmm. actually have no understanding of the historical nature of our art practices mm -hmm. and actually need to be pushed. I mean, the art world needs to also be pushed to embrace and understand and study and legitimize this kind of work. Well, they all pay attention, don't they? So even though there may not be um, a ton of support for the types of ideas necessarily from the academics or the canon, they were all at the opening. They've all come to see the show. They're all thinking about the work. And the way that I push it is by writing about the work, is by showing the work and giving artists. With this exhibition, there are nine site-specific commissions specifically for this show. That's a really unusual number of commissions to undertake in one exhibition that happened in about eight-ish, six to eight months. Um, and so for me, it was not only just that I was showing projects that artists are doing now that are pushing back, but that I was giving them opportunities like you. You know, I heard your comment earlier about wanting to make a giant vagina. And uh, you, that was a conversation that we had. And I said, you know, that kind of privileges bionormativity. I'm sorry, but you're pushing me to go there. I said, so I want to I wanna think like, and during installation, I was on the phone one day and I said, Fabiana, I 
by the way, I see that vagina in the middle of your, your mural there. I didn't, don't think I'm not seeing it. it. It looks like an earring. You see it? You see it now, don't you? <laughs> and don't think I didn't know there was going to be one turning up. I bet there's more in there that I just haven't seen yet. <laughs> The thing I want people to take away, which circling back, I heard I just got the, my own bell. The thing I want people to take away, this is unusual for an exhibition, an art exhibition. I want people to take away the idea that they have agency, mm -hmm. that they can also do the same things that these artists have done in terms of leveraging their own skills or gathering their own community and responding to the things that matter the, the most to them. And it feels really urgent, urgent yeah. to me. My essay is called The Fierce Urgency of Now. And I'm borrowing that from President Obama, who borrowed that from Martin Luther King. And because I do feel like right now there is a fierce urgency. We have elections coming up. We have an opportunity to force change that we want to see. And that will not take just a few people working in the ranks. It will actually require all of us. And so I want everyone to see that they can do the things they can respond to the things that they care about most. Well, thank you so much, Christian, for bringing us all together. My and radical soup. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for sticking it out. Thank you so much to my artist collaborator friends. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Yerba Buena Center for the Arts. <laughs>